Hello everybody, I'm Jesseon, and welcome to Endless Sky. Um, this is the first time I've booted up this game. We're going to take a look at it. Um, there's a story behind this. Basically, I thought about I wanted to do some more Escape Velocity videos, and uh, so I, you know, I downloaded Escape Velocity again, or Escape Velocity Nova specifically, and uh, it told me my license code was out of date because it has silly DRM. I was like, okay, fine, so I got a new license code, came back, put it in, and the game doesn't work anymore. It just doesn't work on new, on the new Mac OS. So, you know what? And just kind of like, Ambrosia's been pretty much a ghost town for, the, they're Ambrosia's the people that made Escape Velocity. They've been pretty much a ghost town for the last, for quite a few years now. They don't support any of their stuff anymore. They just don't care. And you know what? Fine. I don't care about them either. But I thought, surely there's got to be another game like Escape Velocity out there somewhere. I looked online. I found a few threads. People that like also played Escape Velocity are like, yeah, here's you know, here's what I've found lately. That's just like it's just like it. So this is one of them. We're on the hunt for the new Escape Velocity. So this is Endless Sky. It's open source. You can get it free on Steam. That's like that's a great price. And uh we'll give it a go here. So let's see preferences. We've got our controls. Up, left, right, down. Uh-huh. Fire afterburner. Land on planet. That's kind of weird. Primary and secondary weapon tab and Q. That's okay. I might have to just like re um I might remap these at some point, but no, let's just get going here. The bank's architecture is what you would have called futuristic back when you dreamed that the future would be less squalid than the present. Story above story of curves and spires and balconies, all in gleaming metal. A doorman stands by each of the heavy glass doors. You are wearing your very best clothes, but you feel shabby next to them. The loan broker's office is equally intimidating. Large computer monitors fill the walls with stock quotes and other information spilling down them almost too fast to read. You occasionally glimpse the names of places that you have only seen in movies. Aldebaran, Tarazed, Earth. The pen is heavy as lead but glides almost without friction as you print your initials on the bottom of page after page of ominous legal documents and sign several dozen statements, notices, and agreements. The banker, a balding, middle-aged man in a suit that you suspect costs more than the spaceship you are about to purchase, flips the pages past you quickly, uttering a curt sign here, now here, as he points to each page. He moves swiftly, mechanically. The only moment when he becomes truly animated is when explaining the truth in lending statement to you. You are borrowing 480,000 credits, he says, to be repaid over the course of one year. Your daily interest rate is 0.4%, which means that your daily payments are 2503 credits, and by the end of the year you will have paid... 434,000 credits in interest. Sign here, he grins. You sign your name one final time. The elevator is so well-tuned that you do not have even realize that it is moving until it is deposited you back in the lobby. But as you leave the bank, you are smiling. The crazy adventure suddenly feels real to you. You are going to do it. You are finally going to get off this planet. Compared to the bank, you feel much more at home in the shipyard, walking among the rusted out hulks and newer ships that gleam in the sunlight. You smell grease and dirt and rocket fuel, wonderful smells. There are three ship models within your price range. Which one you choose will determine your future. So you have the transport. So there's a shuttle. Shuttles are not designed to withstand combat of any sort, but they are fast and maneuverable enough to get out of harm's way if attacked by a larger, slower ship. Although they are typically unarmed, they have enough space for one weapon, which is the origin of the proper phase, as useless as a blaster cannon on shuttle. The light freighter. Syndicate, uh, because they often carry valuable cargo, and because they are too slow to evade attackers, star barges are a common target of pirates. And the interceptor. Insurance reports indicate that as many as two out of every three first-time ship buyers who choose to pilot a sparrow lose their ship, and often their life as well, within the first month of owning it. I think we're going to go take out the sh shuttle. That's what I'm used to with starting with. 349, 375, 448. Alright, well, we're going to get the shuttle. 
New name for our shuttle. Jesse shuttle. All right, let's leave. With some trepidation, you give the shipyard owner your money and take your new ship for a test drive, piloting it out of, out of the shipyard and onto a spare landing pad by the spaceport. Then you get out and look the ship over a bit more closely. You are busy polishing out a few rust spots with a piece of steel wool when an old man in grease-stained coveralls walked up. Nothing quite like buying your first starship, he says. Hmm. Yep, still kind of in shock. He grins. I know the feeling. It's a crime how much interest the banks charge to first-timers. It's been that way since I first started out. Your captain, you ask? Was, he said. Sold off my fleet a few days ago, and I already miss it. But it was time. Time for me to retire. His voice trails off, and his face lights up. Say, any chance I could hitch a ride with you? Maybe show you the ropes? Give you some pointers? I could pay you, of course. Sure, where are you trying to get to? Well, he says, I got a spot reserved in a retirement home, but I don't mind taking a roundabout way to get there. For starters, how about you give me a lift to New Greenland? It's just one jump away in here. Sounds good. Great, my name's James, by the way. Jesse, you say. I'm looking forward to traveling with you, Captain W. As you're helping him wheel his luggage aboard and showing him his bunk, he says, before we take off, you might want to head on over to the trading center and stock up on medical goods. We can sell those for a good profit on New Greenland, or take a look at the outfitter if you'd like, but they don't sell much here compared on the big manufacturing worlds. Alright, so... The training paddle. Earn money by buying commodities, a lower price in one system, and selling at a higher price elsewhere. Okay. So they said uh, medical equipment. Yeah, we'll try buying some of that. There we go. I could have just hit buy all, I guess. All right, here we go. Depart. Welcome to the sky. To travel to another star system, press M to view your map. Click on the system you want to travel to. Your hyperdrive can only travel along the links shown on your map. After selecting destination, push J to jump. Yep, okay. Ship does not jump until you release the jump key. Okay. Once you have escorts, you can hold the key to get them ready to jump, then release it to have them all jump simultaneously. Alright, that makes more sense. When you reach a new system, press L to land on any planets. Don't worry about crashing asteroids. You fly safely above or below them. Yep, alright. Oh yeah, this definitely... Yep, this controls exactly, exactly like it. So, pull up our map. I assume that's where we want to go with a little blue bop. Done. Yeah, I feel right at home. You gotta hear it. I wonder if there's like a limit for how far you have to be out. I assume there is. Alright. Be here. L. Oh, cool. You just push L and it lands it for you. As you land on New Greenland, James says, Congrats on your first trip through hyperspace. I'm impressed that you didn't throw up. Most folks do the first time. Including you, you ask? Yeah, and then spent half an hour in orbit cleaning my cabin while hoping the passengers wouldn't come out of their bunk room and see the mess. Not my proudest moment. Anyway, here's your pay. Hands you 10,000 credits. And he adds, If you're okay with giving me a lift a little longer, so off any of that cargo you bought and meet me in the spaceport. See if I can rustle up any interesting work for you to do. Done. Alright, so... Sell all. Nice. Go to the spaceport. You begin thro strolling through the spaceport, walking briskly in order to keep warm and wondering if it might be worth investing in a good winter coat for visiting planets like this one. Eventually you find James. He has an entire family in tow. A young couple, an elderly woman, and four children who range in age from probably up to three or four up to twelve or thirteen. Captain W, he says, wonderful to see you again. I was just talking to this family. They've been having trouble finding a single ship that can give them all passage. But I told them that your shovelcraft has plenty of bunks, at least if the kids double up. They could pay you 40,000 credits to take them to New China, which is just a few jumps away from Earth, and is a planet well worth visiting in its own right. What do you say? You're absolutely sure that your shuttle was not designed to fit nine people, including yourself, but if they're willing to squeeze into the available five bunks, you've got no reason to discourage them. Sure, welcome aboard. James helps the other older woman up the steps and into your ship while the younger family members carry the luggage. Going to have quite a few ships the next few days. Hire crew? Hiring extra crew is only helpful if you plan on capturing enemy ships. Okay. Yeah, no. Interesting. It is the bank. Here you can apply for new mortgages if your income and credit history allows for it. No, nope, no, nope, I'll pass. Oh, so you could just pay it here. Hmm. 
so let's pay um so let's pay some of this. Um let's go uh let's go ahead and pay twenty thousand. Alright, so that reduces our daily payment. Okay, cool. So depart, bring up the map. Alright, so I don't have a way to get there. Jump. Nope, you don't have to be too far out of the middle of the thing to jump. Just jump up here. Let's try this one. So where's my fuel? This is a temperature gauge. I think this is fuel. We'll find out here when we jump again. Yep, that's fuel right there. I think that energy might be your... That little, this little lightning bolt might be your shields, and this will be your, maybe your weapon temperatures. No target. Nice map that's already in color. Oh, uh, maybe this is your shields and weapons. I don't know what these are. Maybe it's like... There we go. Oh, that's nice. It lands pretty well. Along the journey, you've learned that the family you're transporting are named the Hendersons. They are moving to New China, mostly because they hope the urban setting will be better than their, for their kids than New Greenland, where there were hardly any children at all, and their village had only a few thousand people in it. The grandmother, Olivia, has also been chattering non-stop about how, exciting she, how excited she is about being on a world where she can actually go sunbathing. I've gotten much too old for snowshoeing, she says. You say goodbye to them and wish them well, and as agreed, they pay you 40,000 credits. You're already all well on your way to paying down your mortgage. As James leaves the ship, she says, Again, if you're okay with continuing to give me a ride, just meet me in the spaceport. Sure. So let's look at our outfitter. Here you can buy equipment for your ship. Ship has a limited amount of outfit space. Most outfits take up that space. Yep, uh-huh. Some types of outfits have other requirements as well. Some of your outfits are only used for engines or weapons. Engine and weapon capacity. Okay. Guns and missile launchers also require a free gun port, and turrets require a free turret mount. Yep, I'm used to that. Missiles can only be bought if you have the right launcher installed. Yep. So let's see. Oh, there's got to be quite a bit. Beam lasers. Energy blasters. Do I have any weapons at all? Doesn't look like I have any weapons at all. One gun point. I kind of wanted to, like, let's go ahead and buy that. So we got no gun ports free now. We didn't have any turrets to begin with because we're a shuttle. Could have gotten some missiles instead. Javelins? Yeah, I remember javelins. Yeah, this is a lot like the escape velocity. I'm liking it. I like it. It's even, you've even got like the same sort of style of art. You can tell it's a little bit different, but it's gotten the same sort of idea. What do these powers do? Ship can run without batteries if its generator's instantaneous power output is higher than its total energy consumption. Huh? Yep, okay. Does anything talk about uh, energy consumption? Ah, here we go. Idle. So those are battery packs. Energy capacity, 1,000, okay. These generate energy. These probably are your, these probably keep thing, or determine your movement speed. This is, so they have steering and thrusters. Okay, this is a little more complicated. Usually in escape velocity, only sort of like, engine thing you would buy would be your afterburner. Everything else was just like it was part of the ship. Here you actually buy specific engines. Local map is always good. I have a pilot's license. I'll buy that. Give me that local map. Those are always good to buy. So what do we have installed on our... So if we go to... Let's see here. Okay, so we've got these iron ion things here. Turning thirty turning eighteen thousand four hundred and twenty. I guess this is what this is right here. Movement full no cargo. Okay. So we actually get different speeds for when we're full of cargo and not full of cargo. 
They're like just slightly different. Okay, that's actually really cool. Um, so we have these things here. Okay, that's cool. All right, so let's go to the spaceport. It doesn't take you long to find James in the new China spaceport. He's already got a small group of people with him. Middle-aged couple and teenage boy. Hi there, Captain W, says James. Interested in carrying some tourists to Earth? Sure. Right, he says, this is Chuck and Sarah and their son Carl. Let's help them carry their luggage to your ship. As you begin walking back slightly ahead of them, James whispers to you, tourists are always a good way to make money. They're on vacation, so they don't mind paying a bit extra. But no point in your cargo space going to waste. So take a look at the job board and see if there are any delivery missions we can run at the same time. Job board. Taking on jobs is a safe way to earn money. Special missions are offered in the spaceport. More mundane jobs are posted in the job board. Most special missions are only offered once. So, you know, it's just, that's exactly the same way as Escape Velocity. This game really is. I think... I think when I saw this on the store page, like when I was directed there, it actually has the Escape Velocity listed in its... in its, like, little blurb at the top. It's like, yeah, this game is trying to be Escape Velocity. So far, it seems to be doing a pretty good job. All right, so here's Soul. We could probably so here's Soul, and we're going there. I wish it didn't jump around. That would be just like put the circle on it and don't jump around. Jump, jump, jump around. Alright, so we could deliver to calf here, and then, so there's nothing that's like on the way, but there's definitely some stuff nearby, like we'll, uh, okay, that's way too much space, so I guess these ones are the ones that are, alright, yep. Alright, so there's nothing that we can do. Everything else that's around there is on somewhere else. Alright, so let's depart. Alright. There we go. Ah, oh, so it just maps automatically. You just click on where you want it to go and it maps there. That's nice. There we go. Life as a free trader is harder than it looks. That's cool, so you get little... There's Earth. There we go. As you made the final landing descent to the surface of Earth, Chuck and Sarah were staring out the window in rapt attention, pointing out landmarks on the planet's surface. James joins in by telling you all about some of the histories of the cities you were flying over. Carl, meanwhile, has spent the entire journey playing a handheld video game and only glances out the window when the ship shakes from turbulence. As they all grab their luggage and step off your ship to explore humanity's homeworld, he's still immersed in the game. As you collect your payment, James pulls the parents aside and says, Watch out for pickpockets, okay? Take it from an experienced captain. You do not want to be out after dark here. Play it safe and have a great time. After they leave, James shakes his head ruefully. It'll probably be a decade before that kid is old enough to realize what he's missing out on. Waste of money doing a trip like this with a teenage boy. They should have gone to Skymoot and seen the dragons instead. I'm sure that would interest him a lot more than historical museums in ancient cities. Then he picks up his luggage and adds, Same deals before. If you want to keep traveling together, meet me in the spaceport. You bet. Here we go. Spaceport on Earth is so big and crowded that it takes a long time to find James. The sheer number of people here is almost overwhelming. Homeless men wrapped in old army blankets beg money from well-dressed businessmen. Soldiers in Navy uniforms walk by in groups of 10 or 20, all marching in unison. Starship captains haggle with merchants over trade goods and jobs. Flashes of light come from various landing bays as welders make repairs. When you find James, he's standing by a window looking out at the city, watching the starships taking off and landing in a continuous stream. This is it, he says, where our race began, the world that all the tourists want to visit and that no one wants to live on. Ten billion people, more industry and exports than any other place in the galaxy, but underneath it all, poverty of a completely different sort from what you've got in the dirt belt. 
After tacking one last long glance out the window, he says, Anyway, we're nearing our destination. Willing to take me on one last trip? I need to get to Hestia in the Talita system. Of course, I'll pay you quite well to take me there. Once again, you walk back to your ship with James. Once you get there, as he's stowing his luggage, you pull up the information your computer has on Hestia. It's one of the paradise worlds, terraformed to have a perfect climate, accessible only to the very wealthy. You wonder whether James is going to be able to fit in there. So let's look at our job board. So where are we going? We're going over here. All right, let's leave. Let's go to the outfitter. I assume you can just buy tons of stuff here. Buy, buy one of these. And then uh, go back, look at the job board. All right. Probably go there, and then it'll be a jump to there. Or it's probably better just do that. Yeah. So far, I'm liking it. It's, it's good. It's doing really good for itself. It's, uh, this is definitely the sort of game that I've been looking for. Um, oh, there's nothing here. There's no way to get there. Definitely want to leave. We'll land on something. Automatically refuels, we don't have to worry about it. Um, outfitters, there we go. Oh, wait. Okay, that shows you where you can buy stuff. Alright, that's different. Local map here. Oh, okay, already mapped all the systems shown by this map, no reason to buy another. Okay, cool, that's good to know. Um... I guess we'll uh, jump around a bit then. Go back here to Sirius. Depart, jump. Finally dropped off some sheep and now my ship's hold still stinks. Alright, since we don't know what's going on here at, uh, past this planet, we'd better refuel. Maybe buy another local map here. Yeah, there we go. Now we can get there. Oops. Apparently hitting escape while on that screen just takes you to the main menu. Alright, empty system. Even the rocks, like the asteroids, look like uh, the old Ambrosia asteroids. Which, to be fair, like asteroids in the original EV just looked like um, they looked like the exact same asteroids that was in their uh, one of their other games, like one of their first games. It was an asteroids clone. Wait, am I here? Oh, whoops! I jumped way too far. Oops, yeah, no fuel to make hyperspace jump land. I missed it. I'm dumb. Alright. How did I miss it? That was weird. Go ahead and land. As you're piloting your ship down to land on Hestia, James disappears into his bunk room. After the ship he's landed, he comes out no longer in the grease-stained oak coveralls he's been wearing up until now, but in a suit. As a lifelong textile worker, you automatically note this suit is made of real wool. Finally, very finely woven, and has been tailored to fit him. He smooths down the front of his suit distractedly and looks at his hands if unsure where to put them. Yeah, how do I look, he asks. <laughs> hmm, like a millionaire. Well, that's the other thing about being a captain, he says. You can get filthy rich. Here's an awkward pause. You're unsure of how to respond, he says. Thing is, this here plan is one of the most exclusive retirement communities in the galaxy. Plenty of the locals are probably worth more than a billion credits, but they're mostly financial or business types or old money. I'm rich enough to be here, but I just hope they're willing to socialize with someone who made his fortune flying a ship. Hands you a credit chip worth 30,000 credits, says best of luck to you, Captain. Don't hesitate to look me up if you're in the area. Let's go to the spaceport. Nothing here. 
All right. So there's no like um, gambling or anything. It looks like. So we'll check out our job board. This is a nice job board here. It tells you exactly where everything is. Um, let's look at trading. Can I look at the job board and then see the... Nope. Alright, well, let's see what we've got here. No route mapped. So let's see, 16 tons and then a family of 5 farmers. Alright. Canopus, accept mission. All right. All right, let's give it a go. What's all the green mean? Oh. So you can see the various prices of everything. Okay. Oops. All right. Go here to Aldbron. Jump. I think we'll go do these two missions and then we'll call it good for now. And you know what? I might just keep playing this game afterwards because this is kind of sort of the thing that I'm looking for. There's a few changes that it made to the system that I like. Um, no real complaints just yet. It, it seems pretty solid to me. You can buy a laser rifle? Okay. Alright, so this is for like increases capturing attack and defense. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Leave, depart, jump. The ships, they look, they look very classic EV. Escape, very classic escape velocity. I don't like that. Um, you know, they're not the exact same ships, obviously. But they have that sort of that sort of texture about them. This game, I think, it, I think this could be it. But I've got a f one other one to check out as well. Um, so we'll see how that one goes. Oh, nope. Bye. I'm out of here. Oh, cool. Okay. So hitting jump, even if you're not mapped to anything, will actually just it'll kick you out to a next area. It will actually... It will actually make you jump out. Like, if you need have an emergency jump, you need to jump. You can just hit L to land once. So I've been hitting... I've been double tapping it, basically. Alright. Nothing at the spaceport. Trading. You could buy medical very low and metal very low. So if you look at our map, medical, medical's pretty low all over the place. Um, it's a little bit higher there. You get a good price. Um, how about metal? Metal, we can actually get a make a really good profit on. We can land here. This must be red. Must mean we don't have enough fuel there. So. Does that really have like a mission to jump here? And then there's two missions here. So I think we might take these two missions over to Seoul and then buy enough metal and drop that off at Sirius. So we got here, Mars, rush delivery to Mars, accept, tourist to Mars, accept, and done. And then we go back and we buy a bunch of metal
and then we drop it off here at Sirius. Or do we want to do it at Denebola? 228, 237, we want to go to Denebola. So we'll be able to go jump, 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 refuel, jump, 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 drop off everything here, and then go over here. And this will be a good opportunity to see if just hitting L will automatically land us at somewhere we want, like the place that we want to land on. Like, as in like, if it'll target Mars or if it'll target Earth. Jump! And I do like the game also lets you pull out, a, you know, it gives you a loan at the beginning. So you're not just like... Sort of, you know, like, stuck. You don't have to just grind out money forever. You can buy, you can get loans. And then if you find yourself making it rich, you can pay it off. There we go. Okay. All right, how do I cancel the landing? Why why don't you want me to land here? That's a restricted. Well, that would have been nice to know. Haha. <laughs> well, maybe I can just reload at the previous, uh, at my last planet. System Capella. Yeah. So, uh, what we actually want to do is go here, and then refuel, and then jump to here. Did I buy? Yeah, I bought the stuff already. So we'll go ahead and do that. So there we go, you know, classic EV mistake of you'll strand yourself if you're dumb. All right. Land. Oops, you just ran. Oh, what? Really? Oh my gosh. That was dumb. All right, anyway, I think I'll call it here, actually. Um, thanks for watching. I might just keep playing it. I'm not sure what I think about being able to hit J and then it jumps for you, because I'm just so used to hitting just J automatically until it tells you, no, you can't jump anymore. Um, you don't have a you don't have a target, so I don't know what I think about that. But um, I wonder if that's like a thing that you can toggle. But anyway, you know what? Thanks for watching. Um, this one is really good. There's at least one other one that I want to try that's also free. Um, and. Um, so I'm Jesse on, and I'll see you next time.